right now. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rick Zanotti, and welcome to Shrek Tech, episode number 62. It is June 12th already, and sitting right here next to me, about a 1,000 miles away or maybe more, is Gina Shrek. Hey, Gina, how are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Yeah, um, you know, in the chat room, they're already talking about how old we are, 62. Um, but you know what? We do Botox right after the show um, each week, so we stay looking youthful. <laughs> I, I don't do Botox. Yeah, I, I, know, go, I, I go in a bariatric needles, chamber and they just... Needles my face. <laughs> no, it's all bariatric yeah. chamber stuff. No. Yeah. Um, so how have funny. you been, Gina? It's almost Father's Day. That's right. Yeah, it kind of snuck up on me. And I went, oh my gosh, it's Father's Day. <laughs> yeah, but Father's Day is one of those anti-climax kind of holidays where people just are forced to observe it. Everybody goes, hey, I don't want to do it for my father. Oh, I got to get my dad's <clears throat> Yeah, there. give him a tie again. He hasn't worn a tie in years. Give him a tie anyway. He can <laughs> hang himself. Well, see, and I always look for fun gadgets and technology things. So I do have two tech things that I will be going out today, as a matter of fact, with the Shreklet and I'm um, getting. And we're looking for the... It's not called the jukebox. It's called the jam box. It looks like a little Lego cube. And the jam box for $99, it boosts, I mean, it's really, it's Bluetooth, and it makes the sound really great. And I thought, we have the Sonos um, system in our house, but we don't want to bring the Sonos speaker outside because it's not Wi-Fi. Mm. So you do have to plug it in somewhere. And then if you forget to bring it in, the real expensive speaker. So I'm going to get this jam box, and they're really, they have small ones, little, uh, they have little ones, and the sound is great. Um, so I'm going to get one of those today, number one, for outside. But number two, um, Kirk is always listening to things on his iPad. And in the car, he was trying to um, see his car is older. It does not sync up Bluetooth so he can listen to podcasts in his car from his iPad. He would have to download them to an iPod. Then it goes into a little docking thing in the car. So I said, well, why don't you just put a little speaker? So he went and bought a little speaker. I think he was at the airport. But it, it was a speaker that was supposed to boost the sound of your iPad. Right. It actually is lower sound huh. volume when the speaker's in than when it's out. Great. Yeah. So I thought the jam box is a good gift for dads. And um, and good. I know you have one that we're going to talk about too. But um, I that's going to be one of my good gifts. As, and, and then a fire pit. And really that one's for me. Hmm. <laughs> I always think of things I want to get. And then I go... So that's why it works. That's why I said it's it's a very anticlimactic holiday. Yeah, it's, that's why we don't buy ties because I I wouldn't wear the tie. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll so just anyway, so tell me what's happening in the world of uh, social media news. Oh gosh, there, there's actually a lot going on always in social media news. Um, we'll talk about the Apple stuff um, yesterday, the development conference. Yes. And uh, but. And, and by media, by the way, I have to tell you about that. Let's, let's shall we talk about Apple real quickly? Uh, let's do it because it's kind of tie. It, it well, it doesn't tie it's, in at it's all. It's very interesting. I went <laughs> about a week and a half ago. I went and got an iMac i7. And oh And no. when I was at Sammy's, this guy comes up to me and goes, "Hey, why don't you hold off a couple of weeks? Because they're coming out with brand new iMacs." And I looked at him. I go, "Yeah, you know what? I'm fine." And uh, he was a little listen. odd. I, mean, I appreciate the uh, the the talk, but he was a little odd. So, so in the announcement yesterday, there were new, no new IMAX at all. Yeah, you're right. There was, there there was, was really all new. about the MacBook Pro. There's not much they could do on the iMac right now. It's on the, sort of making it thinner or less hot. It's pretty much where it's going to be for a while. Uh, yeah. But there was one announcement, which I kind of wish I had thought about. The new Mac Pro, which is yeah, the big uh, one, uh, is out. After two years, they finally revamped it. 
and I think they added Thunderbolt to it and some other stuff. So that one oh, is they, out. They beefed it all up and then they made it a quarter of the size. I know, they the made it smaller, like which is pretty air. cool. Yeah, so, MacBook so, Pro Air, which they're kind of calling the MacBook Prayer. Pro Air. Pro Air so Prayer. Like yeah. MacBook Prayer. Well, the um, MacBook Pro looks more like an Air right now. I know. I wish I had that because my MacBook Pro is heavy. So they are. I need to they bring are. that with me traveling. But it's, you lost the 17 inch screen. Well, there are no true. more 17 inch screens on the MacBook Air, it looks like. It looks like now it's 15 and a half. 15, right. Which I and thought I was a step seven. downward. I mean, why do we need smaller screens? Yeah, um, that is interesting. I, I, and I do like the bigger screen, although I don't, I don't know why I still need to put my glasses on. So I pretend I can see, regardless of the size <laughs> of the screen, I still need glasses. Um, so, but yeah, I thought that was one of the big news um, items with Apple. There were a lot. There were a lot of things that were rolling out. I'm excited to for the new um, upgrade that's coming to iOS. Right, you get Siri. Yeah, it'll have Siri, but the dictation built in, they're saying, is going to be hands down well, you one know, of the best features. And it's really good as it is. It, You know, it is. Dictation is getting, it's still one of those frustrating things if it doesn't work and you're in your car, you're trying to be safe, so you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to talk instead of text or type. Right. And then it doesn't work, and then you're trying to look at where's the button again, and um, you, know, well, you, you know, still maybe, can't do it while you drive. Maybe we should do a show where we just talk like Siri. Hello, Gina. I can help you with that. I can find that. For I can you. find that for you. Shall I call you Rock God? Gina, <laughs> what was I cannot show? find that. Um, Which person would you like me to call? Well, you know, another thing that would be great is if you could name the device, such as Siri or whatever you want to call her, um, and then when you say her name, it turns on. Instead of you having to push a button. I know, the button's a pain. I know. I, I wish, and again, I don't even have an iPhone. I have an Android, but I still use the um, voice control. I wish there was a way to say, and Andrew, because that's what I would call mine. Andrew. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, and then it would say, yes, goddess. And then that's what I would say, please look up directions to whatever. And, and that way you never have to touch your phone. So that, but I do think we're going that direction. I mean, well, you know, I that's, think, that's no better. I mean, what would a guy do? <laughs> You give me the wrong direction. Hey, babe. Um, you know, <laughs> and then I would say, "Hey, baby, here's how you got to get there." Oh. Um, yeah, there was there, a comedian there, who used to do a whole thing on that when cars first started talking to you yeah. about how he had reprogrammed his car to be a sex machine. I was just going, "Okay." <laughs> men would not. Men would change the voice to a guy's voice because they didn't want to take directions from a woman. Oh no, no, oh. they prefer. Actually, they said they the men prefer the woman's voice yeah. as long as it's not nagging. <laughs> yeah, I said turn right. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Um, yeah, it's, but one of the big um, exciting things that Kirk was most excited about because he has an iPhone and he hates Google Maps on the iPhone for the direction. There's really no good navigation system currently. Well, he did download one app and I can't remember the name of it, but he really liked it and it talked. It spoke the directions, but then it had a fee like four dollars a month. Right, like, I'm right. Pay four dollars a month. For a navigation system now, Android phone. I have I use the Google um, navigation, and it's great because it talks to you turn by turn. Sure, sure. Um, love it, but it, that's not available on an iPhone. But they, they did say there's a really sweet navigation or mapping um, tool that's coming to the new iOS, and so that was to me one of the big exciting things. I think they called it Flyover. Hmm. I think that's what it was called. Uh, but it was going to be a, a mapping system like no other, they said. So that's exciting. Um, but then they're good at hype. Yeah, they are good at hype. Um, I have to go back real quick because Dawn said she has a chic, I'm, I'm guessing it's chic boom speaker uh, for your iPad. Is that what it's actually called, Dawn, is chic boom? Or is it It's just chic, so you call it that? Maybe it's chic and it goes boom. Because I do need to find something that boosts sound for iPad, because that's still um, one of the faults of this. Um, well, you can so get lots of speakers for iPad for for the iPad. I've got. Um, you can but get the uh, compact, and then they oh, no, really no, the, do. I mean, some of them are pretty large. Um, yeah, they go to from, travel or to bring in your car. Well, I do have to, one that's really good, um, and I got it at Brookstone. If you go to Brookstone, they have about five different speaker systems. I don't remember what this one's called, but it's really small. It's like a little R2-D2 kind of size. 
and maybe oh. about yay big. Let me let me zoom in here. So it's about maybe that big, maybe about three inches by. Yes. It's just a small, maybe two inch diameter, and it has a couple of controls, and it's also USB. So it goes into the USB to get charged, but then oh. on the back it just goes into the um, the iPad stereo. Like the input. headphone, yeah, phone, the headphone yeah. input, and okay. it sounds really good. I mean, very rich, and it doesn't oh. take up a lot of space at all. No battery because it's it's USB charged, right? And that one, I forgot what it was, about forty fifty bucks at Brookstone. That one was good. They had one that was a square. That one didn't sound that good. It actually started breaking in no time, and it was about, I know, probably and thirty I had forty bucks. Another one that I got at one of those type of stores, and it. It, the quality of sound was terrible. I was like, how do they not have something uh, with a good boost? Now, that, that little jam box, I mean, it was little. They're the, the little ones that look like yeah. Lego. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. They had awesome quality sound, and I tested it at that Verizon Innovation uh, Lab that I went to, and it was really great sound. And it was Bluetooth, so I thought, oh, you could sync it up with a phone or your iPad. You could bring it outside. You could... So, Thinking that might be the key. I, I'm not now. Bose Bose has oh. a couple that are a little more expensive. I think they started about a hundred, two hundred bucks, but they have pretty good sound. Uh, but again, you're talking a lot more money, and I think they need right. power. And yeah, and that's another thing. It's like I don't want to have to bring it outside and move it around based on where the sun is right. and plug it somewhere else. And yeah, so yeah, not uh, fun. We'll we'll see. But I think that that is, and so definitely um, Apple yesterday. You know, it was definitely a geek conference. It was the worldwide, mm -hmm. isn't that what WWDC, Worldwide Developer Conference? Right. Yeah. So it was definitely a geek fest. It was even a little too geeky for me. I tuned in and out, kind of listening. and um, But I did think I was excited to hear some of the things coming for, you know, for, you know, all the new developments. And it's just it's exciting to kind of see where things are going. Very, It's a very visionary conference definitely filled with hype but i think it's always good to see kind of the future of technology and i think we are going to a place where we won't you know i, I was laughing last night saying we're going to a place where me cheating in typing class in seventh grade will no longer matter um now, i have I think a question we're going to be, how do you I cheat totally cheated in how do you cheat in typing class yeah. when you're typing yeah, and I, I looked at the keyboard and I wasn't supposed to. And now I type ah. all day long, but I still am not. Like, if I have to type numbers, I still have to look. So we're getting to a place now with technology that we'll be using voice commands and touch screens, and probably the touch screen will even go away. But, um, you know, to me, that's an exciting, exciting My, my only place concern with go. talking to your phone and activating it by voice means your phone is constantly on listening. Right. That's battery drainage. Well, that was another thing that they the um, CNET folks I was listening to them, they were talking about that of just saying, you know, we're going to get to a place where the phone does have to always be on to hear when it's needed. I mean, like I was saying, you know, if you could just say to your phone, um, excuse me, Siri, um, look this up for me. Or like in our house, we always say summon this information, summon it. <laughs> so, summon it. Um, we always go, summon of course, of course the problem with that is you realize that if the phone can hear you, so can anybody else who wants to. Yeah, but Rick, you know what? I, I always say, I, you live a clean life and you don't care who's listening, man. That's you know, I, I just, I my world, my life is already out there for the world <laughs> to see. So, um, they did they come did out with. talk about a new iPhone. And you I have heard about those new glasses they're coming out with. The Google Glo Glo I think they're called, Google uh, glasses. what are they called? Uh, life streaming. You put on oh, your with glasses. The screen, yeah, you put um, on your glass. No. You put on your glasses and they automatically stream to the web, to Justin TV or whatever, everything you're doing. Everything you're doing? Anything you're doing. This is you oh, streaming your life like as it goes. You, not you looking at information. No, right? it's whatever you're doing. So, for okay. example, if you go out to a football game, you're gonna, everybody's going to see the okay. game you're watching. It's chronicling every moment of your pathetic life. That's kind of what you it is. Wouldn't want to do that. I, I mean, don't let's know. just admit it. Yeah, I, I don't think I would put it, put them on. Although I, I wish my daughter had those on right now. She's in um, Victoria Falls, Africa, hmm. and in South Africa, and we couldn't get a hold of her. I wish she had something that she was streaming back to us. Um, we did get a text from her, which is an app that I want to share later. But um, 
Anyway, yeah, there's another one I saw at the Verizon Center. It, they were got glasses. They're already being used and tested with the emergency uh, folks, so police officers and things. And they're little, a little band that you wear like glasses, and it had a little screen. So they were using it for, for a missing a uh, child, like a, an Amber Alert, and it pops up in the side with a picture of the child within seconds. So they can immediately be scanning crowds. It was really cool, but they were saying that this technology will then you could summon information that you need from this little screen that was just off to the side, which, again, I could see all kinds of problems with that if you're trying to wear those and drive, but um, which I'm sure I would try to do if I had those. So yeah, I know, a lot, of kids, those are still I know a lot of kids who should be missing, but that's another issue. We, we have bills don't get reported. <laughs> they don't get reported. Uh, yeah. And um, Don asked, was there an announcement of a new iPhone? No. And I think that's because that will be Christmas. It's I supposed think to be October. Be I, I, I heard October. Yeah. Those are usually that's, around. That's the rumor that it's going to be October. It's going to be either a 4 or a 4.5 inch screen. Yeah. That's, that's the rumors. I'd, I'd like anything bigger. Though, though it is very readable. I'm getting um, a new phone. You know, they've been saying this at Verizon for a long time. Um, they did fix my phone, by the way. My my Samsung, my Galaxy Nexus has been fixed with an upgrade to the ice cream sandwich operating system. Um, so that did fix, m fix most of the problems. Um, well, fixed all the ones I was having. But um, part of this innovation team, they're sending us different gadgets to test. And I'm getting the Incredible. It's a phone called the Incredible. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to test that one. I think it's coming next week. So, HTC yeah. makes fairly good phones. I, I don't like Motorola phones. I will avoid them like the plague. Just had problems uh -huh. with them. So it's exciting. Well, here's the social news um, that I thought was really interesting because we've all seen this on Facebook. Uh, you you log in, you know, you're looking at your Facebook feed, and somebody tweets and they post the same content from Twitter to Facebook to LinkedIn. Right. Um, and you know it because they have the hashtag still there. They have the at Rick Zanotti, um, and it's not linking to a Facebook page. It's, um, it's obviously coming from Twitter. And so it's almost like a foreign language to people in Facebook. And there's nothing they can click on to see what does this hashtag Shrek Tech mean? Like, what, why do they put this pound sign in front of these words? What is this language you speak? Uh, well, now, this is kind of big news because Twitter has never been, Twitter incorporates Facebook stuff, but Facebook has never really incorporated Twitter stuff. It, it'll post there. But as of this week, when you see hashtags or at signs, they're starting to roll this out, you'll be able to click on them. And it will take you to, so it's really going to highlight Twitter, So, which is kind of a big thing for Facebook to highlight anybody except Facebook. Well, let's hope in, uh, our, in our wildest dreams, Facebook does not ruin Twitter by buying it. Yeah, that is interesting. I hope not. I know. They're on a buying spree. They're buying up a lot of photo. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll tools. go bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, well, they'd have to buy a lot, I think. Look at look how well they, their stock's um, doing. Yeah, that is interesting. But, the, yeah, this is in, this is an interesting move, <clears throat> number one, strategically, because they're actually highlighting Twitter. Hmm. So when you click on a hashtag, it takes you to other tweets on Twitter using that hashtag so you can see more information on that, which I think is a good thing. I think the bad thing to start is that people put that in their Facebook feed anyway. You need to change up, you know, I always tell people, don't post the same content everywhere. You can post the same message, but you have to change it for each platform so that the, the audience there can understand what you're talking about. But now, look for those um, clicks. Another big Twitter move, and I don't know if there's any NASCAR fans out there, but Twitter ran their first ad. And they actually have mm. seven ads that they created. And uh, the first one ran last weekend, I think. Um, and it was uh, during a, it was a NASCAR themed uh, commercial. But anyway, it was to talk about promoted hashtag pages, that Twitter will soon have pages. So in the old days, you know, last week, um, if you wanted to know what is hashtag Shrek Tech, you would, if you clicked on a hashtag, It'll pull up other hash other tweets, but then you'd have to kind of go. There was what the hashtag was a website you could go and see more content on a hashtag if somebody filled it out. There were a couple hashtag uh, 
sites that you could go as the person who creates the hashtag. I could go and fill out all the information so anyone wanting to know more about it could go there and see. Well, now Facebook is go or Twitter is rolling out these hashtag pages. I think they'll start with celebrity and big event like the Olympics or something. Um, but you can go to a page that is a hashtag page, and it's not a Twitter account necessarily, but it's um, the fans are populating the content, but the page is established because it's a popular hashtag. So it's kind of interesting to see how they're you know helping the community um, utilize Twitter, and that it's kind of getting some interesting exposure from Facebook. But I tell so you, I I'm, hearing, good... I'm hearing more and more people hating Facebook and going to Google+. Yeah, it's you're hearing more of a groundswell comments. That's sort of I'm interesting. I'm really interested in that. I'm interested to hear from the non-tech people. Mm -hmm. You post it on Google Plus. Do you get now? There's a lot to this. You know, do you get conversations, or is it just posting so that it's Google that can find your content? Hmm. As a small business, I tell people it is a strategic move. To create a Google account, you need your Google profile, like we talked last week with Phyllis. You need your profile, then you need your Google page for your business. By posting content there, it is more searchable. I still find, and I, and I guess that it boils down to, you have to take the time to nurture the community like you did on Facebook. Right. On Facebook, we have spent years now nurturing a community of people who will respond to our posts. Um, on Google Plus, we throw something out there and we say nobody, nobody's talking. So it could be that we haven't taken the time to nurture. I, I that. think that's what it is. It's, it's not that popular yet, and so you're not seeing that many people, like you said, having conversations. Right. Maybe that will change. Well, I think again, like any social site, um, you have to take the time to be in there. And I and I say every week, I'm going to commit to spending more time on Google+. Plus, I really want to utilize the Google Hangouts on air. Um, that feature to me is so fabulous and has so many benefits for a business that I can see that being a really important tool. But to do that, you first have to really nurture a community of, of people there. So, um, you know, it's if, if it's part of your business strategy and Google+, Plus seems an important Important audience for you, which means you have clients there, um, then you need to spend time there. Maybe it's only an hour a week, but you need to spend time to go, and, and I would say split that hour up because it's better to be there more days than one big chunk. Um, but nurture, look at how you have your circles set up, you know, fix some of those, change some of those, and yep. uh, spend some time there. But that, that's one of my goals. Yep. Now, do you have any apps today? I do. Okay, one of them that is really um, near and dear to my heart this morning, because we heard from our daughter via this tool, um, actually was brought to us from the Shreklet. Okay, the Shreklet is 16. And, I, you know, if you have teenagers in your life, listen to the tools they're using, because it's always fascinating to me why they move from one tool to another. Like, she is a major Twitter head, loves Twitter. She's all, her, all, her and her friends are on Twitter more than Facebook now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's an interesting trend. But she was saying that there is a tool, an app, and it's free. It's on all the devices, uh, Windows, um, iOS, and Android. I don't know if it's on BlackBerry. I should have checked. It probably is if it's on Windows. But it's called Viber, V-I-B-E-R. Viber, so when I first looked at it, I was like, it's basically it's Skype without the uh, picture, you know, without right, visual. Right. It's basically Skype. It's a voiceover internet messaging service. Um, however, what's better about this one than Skype is I don't have to send someone an invitation to connect. If they use Viber, they show up on here. So some people wouldn't like that. Um, but what was easy about it was I didn't have to look for, okay, what did my daughter, Taylor, who changes the, the spelling of her name to be creative all the time, um, how did she happen to spell her name? T-A-Y-L-E-R today, or was it T-A-Y-L-O-R, or T-A capital Y, lowercase, she's 
<laughs> there's always like some change in the way she spells her name. Um, on on there, it's based on your phone number. So I, if I typed in her phone number, it pulls it up saying she is on Viber. And um, she left for Africa on Friday. And we said, send us a text message because texting is not expensive. We set up a data plan, a global data plan through Verizon so that for $25 a month, she gets 100 megabytes of data to use, which is not a lot. I said, don't, don't go crazy loading a bunch of photos, um, but you can, you know, send us a picture or, um, you know, whatever, update things. Well, we hadn't heard from her. So we started to get a little concerned, you know, going Sunday. We still don't know. Um, and then this morning, we all had a Viber message. And it was from her saying Skype was not working. Don't know why. And her text messaging was not working. Don't know why. But Viber worked. So um, I, I was really grateful that Bailey had told us about Viber. She said, oh, because we were talking about all the options. Bailey says, Everybody download Viber on their phones before Taylor Lee. I was like, what is Viber? It's like Fiber, but with a V. So Viber, that's my app. I, my app that really, um, it really worked. We kind of saw it in action this morning. Now, my, my app is not really an app. It's more of a complaint about an app. And oh. that is TweetDeck. Shut up. Tweet what is it? Deck. TweetDeck on the Mac. The oh. brand new TweetDeck. If you download it, be very careful. It's no longer the Adobe Air app. And it no longer does half of what it used to do. There are some nice things where you have really nice conversation views. For example, if you talk to someone, if you do, if you do a direct message with someone, it keeps that as a conversation. So you only see that one person. You click on them, and then you see the conversation. That's right. nice. But you can't hit enter anymore to send tweets out. The, the preferences are about four items. That's it. And they're meaningless. They got rid of all the features. Um, it's, it's a nice start, but it's nowhere near what TweetDeck was. So I would say TweetDeck at this point, on the Mac at least, is this side of useless. And I'm, I'm almost afraid to upgrade it on Windows if they make any other similar kind of changes. Um, and people are I'm looking you, for... Hootsuite was a hard transition for me going from TweetDeck because I was a huge TweetDeck yeah. fan. I went from TweetDeck to um, Hootsuite. Mm -hmm. I love Hootsuite. Love it. Um, I love all the things that you can do in Hootsuite. Now we do have the paid version because we have the uh, you know nine people on there, and but now do you like it as much as TweetDeck? I do. You because do because here's the only thing it doesn't do, which is funny that you mentioned it. You can't hit enter and send the tweet, which I mm. used to. That used to be my thing, although it would get me in trouble sometimes. I would <laughs> hit enter and it would send it. Um, but. I, I love Hootsuite because it can do everything you can do in TweetDeck. It, it, there, there are very few features that are different between those two until you see, start adding team members. Then Hootsuite way outshines because you can add multiple people right. onto the account. More, more business oriented. It's definitely for teams who manage yeah. um, social media. Yeah, because, so but there's really nothing like TweetDeck at this point. And frankly, there's nothing like what TweetDeck was because the new TweetDeck is yeah. pretty crappy. But I love the Hootsuite ability to create columns. Analytics. Hootsuite has built-in analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, it, like Bitly shortens the link, and then TweetDeck had their – I think TweetDeck used Bitly, didn't they? they? No, they have their own now, I think. Now it's their own. Tweet yeah. Twitly something. or something like that. Uh, but, yeah. but Hootsuite has their own, um, and it provides analytics, tells you trending uh, – if you have trending posts that are getting a lot of tweets. So – I love Hootsuite, um, but and I have it on every device. I have it on my iPad, so it's the same. I have it on my iPad. I have it on my Android phone. We have it on now. Now, does um, it let you create columns just like TweetDeck did and filters and all that yes. kind of stuff? Yep, it does. Okay. Um, there is a limitation. Whereas Hootsuite, I mean TweetDeck, you had unlimited. I think it was unlimited it, columns pretty much. across. Mm -hmm. Hootsuite, you can have. 20 tabs and each tab can have 10 columns mm. so that's, pretty, that's quite a bit yeah and really if you and it, it helps and i had to work with our team to make sure you're organized so each tab is a client yep. and then within that tab you can have search columns you can have okay you know, um your mentions your direct message you can even have the facebook the linkedin it, it um syncs with all of those accounts as well so yeah, it's worth checking out. Again, the free version, if you're a single person or a solopreneur, 
Hootsuite um, costs nothing. Okay. It's only if you're adding additional people, okay. not accounts. I can have multiple accounts. My Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn doesn't cost me anything. But if I add another person to help me manage those accounts, then you pay. I add team members. Have you yeah, noticed that team. we're all being nickel and dime to death with all these little it, 5, it 10, weird. 15, 20 at, bucks? By the time you're done, it's 500 bucks a month with all the different things you're doing. Yeah. It's it sort of interesting. Um, there is another app, and I was hoping to get developer on um, on the show today and we never connected yesterday but it's one that again I've used and love and the app is called conference me in conference me in the developer is paleon so but you just have to search for conference me in what's what is so genius about this app how many times do you go to attend a conference call from your mobile phone so you go to your calendar and you see the dial-in number, but then you go to dial in the number and then you have to go back to your calendar because you have to get the 10-digit passcode. So from your mobile phone, you're trying to do all of this. Conference Me In, when it when you schedule a conference, Conference Me In grabs all the information, then you push one button when it's time for the conference and it dials the number and fills in the, the code. That's good. It was brilliant. Yeah, a guy here in Colorado, Highlands Ranch, right down the street. Um, so he, I'm going to have him come out because I'm sure it does more than that, but that's the features I've used. I'm going, I love this. Um, conference Me In, yeah. And it's not, I tried to go to conferencemein.com. That's another company. So it's, it's actually an app hmm. within Android and iOS called Conference Me In. Um, I'll now, put that I don't, in. I don't yeah, have... so that was a good one. Now, I don't have an app today. Well, I have a lot of apps, but in this case, today I wanted to share this little keyboard. Oh, this yeah. Is the I'm excited Logitech about this. keyboard, and it looks like an iMac on the side. Right. But what's kind of nice to... about this, it's different from your normal keyboard. Oh, see, I can't see you. I, you hold it up so Here I have we to go. switch to the Justin. Now, now you're seeing the back it. part of. Okay. Let me get this in here. So that's and the back I'm... part. This is the iPad. Right. This is the so other side. Keyboards. This is the keyboard. And now tell me why you like this. I particular like it because one, it's not very obtrusive. It uses a little clip that just has a, a much, so it never really shuts tight. Uh, but it's protected. In fact, I have it on the wrong side. Um, I, think oh. I think it's this way. There we go. Sorry. Does it um, speak uh, via Bluetooth? But it keeps it protected. It has. It's a Bluetooth keyboard. You just hold it, okay. and it looks nice. Looks kind of like a little MacBook Air. Um, yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah, same size. And and keeping with the and this this little magnet's strong. It just I don't know if you can see it right there. I'm bringing it up, and that just holds it in place. And well, you can easily open it because it's only a magnet. So you just yep. pop and it right open. People need to be aware. Um, when you go to look at keyboards for your iPad, there are Bluetooth iPad keyboards, and there are. Uh, little docking station keyboards. That's right. And I've heard the Bluetooth one is the one to get. Yeah, they're a little bit, they're a little easier, and and they'll work better. the The only negative you have to be careful with is that the Bluetooth ones, if you have more than one Bluetooth device or Mac, it will actually try to connect all of them. <laughs> so you kind of have to, no matter how far they are, it's like thirty feet. It'll go, hey, there's another one right over here. I can try to get to that one too. Another uh, iPad or any Bluetooth anything device? Anything that's that's active with Bluetooth. It's okay, sort of, so like my phone would try and sync it up. It may with try it. to sync up to it, so it's a little interesting. Um, could you use it with a phone? You could. It doesn't have a place to put the phone because the iPad fits in this at an angle, and it just fits perfectly. So it's a very good reading angle. Um, but it's is, very good. It's, it's I a, made a note of one. Um. At the at the Verizon uh, meeting, they, they had all of us. They had twelve bloggers. We came together, and uh, one of them, one of the guys, gave me the Bluetooth keyboard that he had just tested all of them. And I think it was this one. Is this one um, Logitech? This is Logitech. Yeah, it's one of the better ones out there. It consistently gets almost five stars. And it's ninety nine dollars. Um, I think it was ninety nine dollars. Yep. Yeah. Um, that was. The, I think that's yep. the one. And yeah, now, now keeping absolutely with absolutely loved it. Now keeping with the keyboard theme. This is a Logitech oops, K750. Let me bring it up to the camera. If you notice, there's a strip at the bottom. That is a solar panel. What? So this Logitech never needs batteries. Any kind of light source will charge it. 
Now, what you're looking at is the black version. This is the Windows version, though you can get a black one for the Mac. I have on my desk at work, oh, by the way, it has little feet. Can you see the feet there? Much better than the Apple keyboard, which doesn't have feet, oh, and you're yeah. stuck with one angle. So you could bring this down or keep or bring it up a little bit. I prefer it up. But the Apple version, which I don't have here, it's in my office, that is silver. It comes in, I think, silver, white, uh, black, and maybe one, of, one or two other colors. Um, that one is a much better typing experience than what you get with your Apple keyboards, which I consider pretty crappy. Um, okay, so what is the name of this keyboard? Logitech K750, and they have a Mac and a Windows version. K750. It's a great, and it's only 60 bucks. Not a bad keyboard. The quality is excellent. The typing experience feels much better than what you get on the um, on the Mac keyboards. And, and like I've heard and read, the the Mac keyboards are actually much slower to type on. They've done tests than, somebody said it was about 30% slower in testing. Uh, that's quite a bit slower for typing, especially the small ones that you get, for example, with the iMacs, they're about half, you don't get the numeric keypads, right? They're really tight. Those, it's basically a crummy laptop keyboard that is on your desk. This is a little wider, the, the keys are bigger, and you feel them more. So it's, it's just a great keyboard. And the bucks. other, the um, iPad one was a Logitech. What was the uh, model? The iPad, oh, I don't remember. Let's see. What does it say? It doesn't say, but it's the only one that's silver. The only one that's silver. It's got the silver back, so that's what you have to look okay. for. It's exactly like the iPad from the back, and it has the little magnet strip, magnetic strip on top. Okay. And uh, Don brought up, pointed out something that's pretty funny. You do get a little excited when we talk about gadgets, Rick. No, I, no, I don't. <laughs> if you talk about social media, Rick falls asleep. But if you talk about gadgets... Now, gadgets are cool. Social media... <laughs> <laughs> You got to uh, remember, Gina. See, you are you are looking at human yin and yang right now. <laughs> yes, we are. Gina I is social. Love, She's <laughs> extremely social. I'm not. <laughs> I do love gadgets. I every day I'm like, okay, I could start a museum <laughs> in my office. I'm just crazy. You know, I have wasted so much money. I know. On same here. I, same I here. I'm trying to get. You know, better at just not going out and buying the, the next shiny object and saying. I know, and it's I'm hard. Eight. It's hard. No, no, you don't have a fries out where you live. Where where we live, no. we are very close to fries, and almost I don't know two three times a week we show up. They probably go here. They are again. Those two. Here they are again. Yeah, and yeah. and we've gotten to the point we will return things that are junk. So of course there's this one cutie pie who works at fries. She's really cute. Mm, not. Um, Oh, she's one of the one of the managers who does return. She just has this look like I hate you. <laughs> oh, that's too bad he's back. Yeah, she's just not very friendly. Um, yeah. She's cute, but she's not friendly. She's one of those who you just go, God, we have to return <laughs> this and she's here. And 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 she pretty much hates us because we we got her once on something that she was convinced was our fault, but we showed her the box and she goes, All right, fine. I hate you though. <laughs> so that anyway. is too funny. <laughs> It um, happens. Well, Gina, guess what? We are near the end of our show. We've been on now for... We did it! We did it for almost 50 minutes. We started at 5 to 8. 35. So we're about 40 minutes. We're trying to get to 30, folks. So I'm excited. But have a great Father's Day to all the dads out there. Uh, thank you much, and thank you for being here today. And if you're in the chat room, always thank you. And we'll see you guys next week. I think we're going to have a guest next week, right? Yes. I don't know who, but we're going to have a guest. Stay tuned. <laughs> this is Gina, G4NA. Four silent. It's my Korean name. That sounds good. <laughs> well, anyway, everyone, have a great one, and we'll see you soon on Shrek Tech. <laughs>